Ads on websites are a bit of a hot potato. On the one hand, a lot of visitors hate them and use ad blockers to get rid of them. But on the other hand, developers and writers somehow have to cover their costs. After all, a website doesn't come for free. And if you ask me, having ads on a website is a fair trade for the content you're getting. Up until very recently, I was using Google's AdSense Auto Ads. These were meant to revolutionize ads on websites. You simply enter one bit of code and machine learning would figure out where to put which ad and would give an optimal experience for both developers, writers, and visitors. But as it turned out, Auto Ads aren't quite there yet. They would randomly put ads inside of my headers or in between the steps on recipes or attached to galleries with no padding around them. And it just made for an awful reading experience. And I'm pretty sure the auto ads pushed some of my visitors in the direction of ad blockers. And it also might have led to more accidental clicks. It was obvious to me that I had to rid my websites of the auto ads and return to the good old manual placement of ads. AdSense ads. But I did have a few requirements though. Number one, they had to be clearly separate from all the other content on the website and if possible in their own little container. Number two, they should interrupt the reading experience as little as possible. Number three, despite all of that, I did want to get a decent amount of impressions and if possible, a few clicks too. With that in mind, I set out to create these ads for my websites. And there are a ton of WordPress plugins that will automatically place ads on your website for you. But just like with the auto ads, I didn't want to trust some machine with the layout of my website. And that is where the brilliant generate press elements come into play again. I wasn't looking forward to editing each individual page and posts on my site. So what if I could just do it using those elements? and perhaps a widget here or there too. With all that said, I did actually end up using a plugin to accomplish some things, too in fact. I did give it a try, but it turns out my coding skills just aren't quite there yet. The good news is that I did find a easy to use and nice looking plugin called Advanced Ads. This plugin won't bug you about paying for a pro version too often, and we can get everything we need done using the free version. All this plugin will do for us is convert the AdSense code into an easy to use short code and do a bit of styling alongside making sure that things look good on mobile as well as desktop. And the answer as to whether I could do this using generate press elements should be pretty obvious by now. I wouldn't really make this video if it hadn't worked, would I? All right, let's get started. Before getting into the heart of the matter, I do want to run through the prerequisites you need to follow this guide. <coughs> you need an AdSense account. I will not be showing you how to do that or give you any advice on the process. It's pretty self-explanatory once you get to the website. You have to be using the WordPress theme Generate Press. This guide will use a feature that is specific to that theme and you do have to get the paid version for that. I'll link a video on the theme somewhere up here. You have to have the plugin previously mentioned, Advanced Ads installed. I will leave some links down in the description. The second plugin you may want to install is called Q2W3 Fixed Widget. It is optional, but very neat. With everything ready and our AdSense account set up, we can finally get to creating our ads. And I will not be using responsive ads in this guide. Just like with the auto ads, I don't trust them not to mess up my layout. On a side note, I had no idea what sizes I should pick. So I used this handy little guide from wpbeginner.com, which I'll also link down below. You can create ad units by clicking on ads, then overview and moving over to the tab named buy ad unit. Let's create our first ad and this one will be an in-article ad. I might sound like I'm going against my word here but these can only be responsive. Though I have found that they don't really vary in size all too often and they do integrate into your articles very nicely. You can also style them just a little bit which is nice. Once we've finished setting up the ad we can give it a name at the top and click save. We won't be needing the code yet, so you can just ignore the next message. While we're in AdSense, we may as well create all of our ads. To create the rest, just click on the big button with the description, display ads, and then enter your size and you're done. In the end, I went with the following formats. The medium rectangle, 300 by 250 pixels for the sidebar and as a leaderboard on mobile devices. The mobile leaderboard, 
320 by 50 pixels in case the medium rectangle ended up being too tall for mobile devices. The billboard 970 by 600 pixels for pages on the desktop. The half page for my sidebar also on the desktop. The desktop leaderboard 728 times 90 pixels. This is used for large ads. Now obviously I'm not going to walk you through how I created each and every one of these ads all the same so feel free to pause this video and create your ad units and then come back again and I'll show you how you can integrate them on your WordPress site. With that done we can now finally head into the WordPress backend and start importing our ads using the advanced ads plugin. Now you will have to configure your AdSense account first but luckily advanced ads makes it quite easy for us. Simply go into the advanced ad settings select the AdSense tab and click on connect to AdSense. This will open a window from which you can select the Google account you use to set up AdSense. The code which will appear will then have to be pasted into the advanced ad settings. I'm not going to be showing all these steps in detail because they do contain a bit of personal information. The first ad we are going to import is our in article ad. To do that, you simply click on ads in advanced ads. We can then select the AdSense ad from the list. This should show us all of the ads that have been created in AdSense. If there's something missing, you can simply click on the refresh icon in the top right hand corner. As you can see here, as soon as I select an in-article ad, a warning pops up. But don't worry, this is to be expected. It means that we have to enter our code manually. Click on the option to insert an AdSense code. This will present you with a field in which you can then enter that code. Now we head into AdSense and find the appropriate ad unit. Click on the code icon, copy your code and paste it into advanced ads. Then you can simply click on next. The following conditions can be used if you only want your ad to appear on a certain device such as a desktop or a smartphone. Ours of course is a responsive ad so we don't have to change anything here. Finally we can select where we want this ad to appear. Here you want to choose content and you should then be prompted to enter a paragraph number. The ad will then appear after that paragraph you defined. There are also a few styling options available here. As you can see I am centering my image and adding a little margin to the bottom just to give it a bit of breathing room. If you wanted this ad to appear only on posts but not on pages you can set up a display condition as you can see I'm doing here. Simply select the condition post type and then click on post. Your ad will now only appear on posts and not on pages. You can repeat these steps using the same ad to add in even more in article ads. I have not decided what I'm going to do yet and I won't be telling you what to do but I am going to move on to the display ads now. Adding these is considerably easier because you don't have to copy and paste any code from AdSense. Advanced ads will automatically import them but one thing I am going to do is set visitor conditions. Some of these ads are meant only for the desktop and some are only meant for mobiles and I can set that up using visitor conditions. As you can see I'm setting this half page ad to be only shown on desktops and I'm also not going to select any placement. That will be done manually using the elements. You can now do the same for the rest of your display ads. Set them all up but don't choose any placement yet. Also don't forget to set your ads to only display on certain devices if needed. With that set up, we can finally start thinking about placing our ads. The first one I'm sure I want is one that spans the whole width above each post. On a desktop that will be a billboard and on mobile devices I'm thinking of going with a leaderboard. To make all of this possible we'll be using the groups inside of advanced ads. So head into the groups, I'm simply naming mine billboard. With the group ready we can now click on edit. Select ordered ads and leave the visible ads at just one. Then add the two ads you want displayed. So for me it's the billboard for desktops and the leaderboard for mobiles. Update the group and head back into the overview. In the same place you can find the edit button, you can also find a button called usage. Click on it and copy the shortcode it presents to you. Head over to the WordPress elements and add a new one. This element will be a hook. In order to give your ad its own little container, we can place it inside a div container. Give this container the class inside article and you're sorted. Now paste the shortcode between the div tags. To place the ad above the content and sidebar but beneath the header, I'm going to select the hook inside container. There's a handy visual guide available in the generate press docs as to where these hooks are located. Next, you want to enable the option to execute shortcodes 
and move over to the display rules. Select posts and leave the other option as all posts. Don't forget to give this element a name and click publish. And just like that, we have our first ad published on our website. This ad will now appear above every post without making any individual edits. Using these hooks, you can place ads anywhere around your content. I've shown you how it's done and you should now be able to do the rest. But what about the sidebar? Well, let's take a look at that sidebar. To accomplish this, I'm once again going to be using ad groups inside of advanced ads. For the desktop, I'm going to go with a half page and for mobiles, I'll choose the medium rectangle. Now, as the half page is set to only ever display on desktops, we should never be seeing that ad on a mobile. What I did forget to do in the recording though is to reduce the weight of the medium rectangle so that it just definitely never shows up on the desktop. Just set it to a 9 or lower and you shouldn't be having any problems ever. With the group created we can now navigate to appearance and then select widgets. Here we can drag an advanced ads widget into our right sidebar. Select the group we just created and click save. That's our sidebar ad sorted. There's one more thing I do want to show you before we finish up on the sidebar using the fixed widget plugin I told you to install. With this plugin we can create sticky ads which will stick to the top of a visitor's screen as they scroll down. That should give us a few more impressions. The fixed widgets options are pretty easy to understand. You'll want to set a top margin if your website uses anything like a sticky navigation menu because otherwise it will just overlap the ad. And the same goes for the bottom margin. If it overlaps anything just adjust that number upwards a bit. To unstick the ad once you reach the bottom of the page you can set up a stop ID. In general press a good ID for that is called footer widgets. If you don't set this the ad will just keep going and going and it'll overlap your footer widgets. We don't want that do we? One more thing you might want to do is to adjust the disable width. I simply set mine to 1024 which is the breakpoint of my theme. That theme is of course generate press. That setting will disable the stickiness on mobile devices. Yes I know it's not done in the video but that is just because I only realized it later and I've done it in the meantime. The rest of the settings, you can leave them as they were. Now, if we go back to the widget section in the WordPress backend, we can select the ad we previously placed and enable the fixed widget option at the bottom. If we now visit our page, you'll see that the ad is actually sticky at the top of your screen, but it doesn't overlap the menu. Let's hope those impressions really do start coming in, eh? One more thing, and I promise this won't take long. If you do want to place ads on your pages, you can either do that doing the hooks, just like with the posts, or you can add them manually. To do that, you can either add a new section if you're using Generate Press sections, and select the ad using the advanced ads icon in the visual editor. Or if you're using the block editor, simply add an advanced ads block and then select your ad from the list. I hope that after watching this rather long video, you A, didn't fall asleep and B, learned how to place ads on your WordPress site using Generate Press. As I've mentioned, all I've done is lay the groundwork for you and shown you how it's done. It's now up to you to start placing those ads and start raking in those pennies. To show you what you could do, here's a quick look at the website I finished setting up in the meantime. On the front page, I put a billboard above the blog posts and inside of one of these posts, you can see I did the same. In the sidebar, there's a rectangle and a half page further down. And that one stays fixed when you scroll down. On the mobile side of things, I replaced the leaderboards with rectangles and you can see everything scales down nicely thanks to the work we've done in advanced ads. Your website will be judged on how responsive it is. So it's always a good thing to check out the layout on one of these things. At this point, I can honestly say that I've achieved the goals that I set out at the beginning of this video. And that's a nice thought to end this video on. If this video was helpful, or indeed it did help you not off, please do leave a like and consider subscribing. That's enough from me for Monday and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.